Hi Gandhi class, welcome to your second English lesson this week. Our learning objective for this lesson is can I use emotive words and language? But what is emotive language? We've touched on it briefly before and I just want you to have a think and see if you remember what it is or just to have a think about what you think it could be. So pause the video here to have a think and maybe a discussion with somebody if they're nearby and they're free to do so. Pause the video. Okay, so emotive language is the term used when we choose words to evoke an emotional response. So it's to make somebody feel something. For example, we may want to make somebody feel sympathy. So in our book, our text map, um, she says, poor old Jack. And this is to make people feel sympathetic towards Jack. They want to feel sorry for Jack. You might want to make somebody feel hopeful. So you might use the phrase, we might win to try and make people feel hopeful that we could win. You might want to make somebody feel angry. So you might say the word something like, that's awful to try and invoke anger um, within somebody. Or you may want to make somebody feel amazed. So I've had the most extraordinary day. Um, that's going to make the reader feel quite amazed. You can use different adjectives and verbs to create a strong emotional reaction for the person reading or listening to you. Here are some examples. So here are some adjectives that you could use. Appalling, wonderful, heavenly, magical and tragic. So by adding in these adjectives, you could change how somebody feels about what they're reading. Or you could use different verbs, such as destroyed, because that sounds a lot worse than broke. You would change the word broke for, for destroyed um, to evoke emotions in the reader. You could have saved, betrayed and adored. So again, these are all different types of words that you could use to evoke an emotional reaction within the person who is reading what you have written or what you've said. So what I'd like for you to do now is get your mini whiteboard out and I want you to have a go at turning these sentences into emotive sentences by adding in adjectives and changing verbs. So pause the video if you need to go and get yourself a mini whiteboard or a whiteboard and a whiteboard pen or a piece of paper and a pencil. Okay, so let's have a look at this sentence. We're going to turn this boring sentence into an emotive sentence. So it says the dog was left by his owner. Now, to make this more emotive, we could describe what the dog's like, change the verb left for something else, and then add in a verb to describe his owner. So what I want you to do on your mini whiteboard is have a go at turning this into an emotive sentence by adding in two adjectives and changing this verb. Pause the video to have a go and then I'll reveal what I've done. Okay, so this is what I've done. I changed it to the poor innocent dog was abandoned by his horrible owner. Now looking at that sentence, how does that make you feel? How do you feel towards the dog? How do you feel towards the owner? What emotion are you feeling right now? Pause the video and have a think. So by using the words poor innocent to describe the dog, it makes me feel sorry for the dog. I feel very worried for the dog as well. By using the word horrible owner, it makes me feel angry towards the owner. And by using this word abandoned, the verb of abandoned instead of left, it evokes a stronger emotional response in me that makes me angry and feel sorry for this dog. So I feel angry and sorry for the dog because he's had such a horrible owner who's abandoned him. Let's have a go at the next one. So here we've got the boy loves his new game. Let's have a go at making this more emotive. So we could add something to describe the boy. 
We could add something else maybe to describe the game. And maybe we could change the verb loves for something else. So pause the video and I want you to have a go at adding up more emotive language into this sentence here. And then I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so I've got the lovely boy adores his exciting new game. So by using this word lovely, um, I've described the boy as being a really nice boy. Um, by using the word adores, that's a stronger word than love. So he really adores his game. And by using the words exciting and new, um, it makes me feel so happy for the boy. I'm, I'm happy that this lovely boy has got this exciting new game. Hopefully you felt something similar when you read that sentence too. Okay, let's have a go at the next one. So. Let's have a go at adding more emotive language into this sentence here. The girl broke her toy. So we could have something to describe what the girl's like. We could have something to describe what her toy's like. And maybe there might be a different verb that we could use instead of broke. Now I want you to pause the video here to have a go at making the sentence more emotive and then I will show you what I have done. <laughs> Okay, so here I've got the silly girl destroyed her brand new toy. How does that make you feel? Reading that sentence now, what emotions are you feeling towards the girl? Pause the video and have a think. Okay, so by using the word silly girl, we know that this girl, well, as I said, it is, she's silly and um, she's done something that was very, very silly of her to do. By using the word destroyed, it's a stronger word than broke. It gives us the image that she has literally taken this toy apart and ruined it. And the fact that it was a brand new toy just makes her seem really rude. So this has evoked more of a um maybe a bit of an anger a bit of maybe frustration maybe i feel sorry for whoever bought her this brand new toy um and maybe you felt something similar okay so let's have a look at this picture and we're going to write an emotive sentence about this now on your whiteboard i want you to have a look and i want you to write an emotive sentence use adjectives use strong verbs what is happening in this picture you've got two boys and they look like they're playing football so i want you to pause the video and i want you to write an emotive sentence about this picture and then i'm going to share what i've done with you <laughs> Okay, so here I've got the proud young boy scored an amazing goal against the other team. So the adjectives I've used are proud and young and amazing. And then the verb I used was scored. So by saying this sentence, how does that make you feel? The proud young boy scored an amazing goal against the other team. How are you feeling about this sentence? What emotions are you feeling? So I'm feeling very happy for this young boy. I feel proud of this young boy for scoring such a great goal. Um, and maybe you felt something similar, happy, amazed, proud um, for this young boy. Let's have a look at the next one. So I want you to write an emotive sentence about this picture on your whiteboard. So you've got a dog and a baby rhino, and I want you to use adjectives and strong verbs to describe this picture in an emotive sentence. Pause the video to have a go, and then I will share what I have got with you. Okay. 
Okay, so I wrote, the kind sweet puppy became friends with the lonely baby rhino. How does that sentence make you feel? How are you feeling towards the dog? How are you feeling towards the rhino? Pause the video and have a think. <laughs> So by using the words kind and sweet to describe the puppy, I have only positive emotions towards the puppy. I feel so happy for this puppy. Um, I feel like this is a really lovely puppy. Um, and I think, you know, he's got a lovely personality. And by describing the baby rhino as lonely and a baby, I feel really sorry for the baby rhino. I feel a lot of sympathy. Um, but because this kind, sweet puppy has become friends with the lonely baby rhino, I feel happy and I feel proud of the puppy for um, doing this really sweet thing for this baby rhino. So this is a very um, an uplifting emotive sentence. It makes me feel very happy towards, towards the puppy. And though I felt sympathetic towards the rhino at first, because I know that the puppy oh, has become friends with it, um, I feel happy now. Almost relieved that the baby rhino has, has a friend. Okay, so there are some activities for you to choose from and I want you to pick the one that's most appropriate for you. So here I want you to make the sentences more emotive by putting in adjectives in the blanks below or you could change some of the verbs as well. So you've got the something musician had to play for the something crowd. So think of some adjectives that you could put in to describe the musician and to describe the crowd. But before you do this, I want you to have a think about what emotion you're trying to convey. How are you trying to make your reader feel? Are you wanting to make your reader feel proud of the music musician? Are you wanting them to feel sad for the musician? Are you wanting them to feel angry? Think about how your reader is going to feel. And then you might want to change some of the verbs as well. So the verb in this one is play. If you wanted to change something, uh, change the word play for a different verb, you're more than welcome to. Um, if not, don't worry, but I do want to have some strong adjectives in there instead then. Then we've got the blank baby cried because she wanted blank food. So you need to describe the baby, describe the food, and then you could maybe change the verb cry to something else if you wanted to push yourself even more. But again, think about how you want your reader to feel. What emotions are they going to be feeling? Then we've got the something Victorian child was put in the punishment basket by his something teacher. So you need to put some adjectives to describe the child and to describe the teacher. Maybe you could change the verb, which is put for something else, a stronger verb. Um, but again, think about what emotion you're wanting the reader to feel. Then we've got something Jack hurt his leg. So you want to describe Jack and maybe you could use a different word instead of hurt, a different verb. Um, but again, what emotions are you wanting your reader to feel? And then we've got something tegbir was given as something present. So again, you need to think of a word to describe tegbir, think of a word to describe the present, and maybe if you wanted to change um, the verb given, um, then you could do so as well, but you need to put a, a stronger verb in there. But again, remember, you need to think about what emotions you are trying to convey. How do you want your reader to feel? So that's activity one. If you're going to complete activity number one, pause the video here. Okay, activity number two. I want you to improve the sentences below by making them more emotive. Add in adjectives and change verbs. So you've got Victorian children had to complete jobs to earn money. So you're going to use adjectives to describe the Victorian children. And I want you maybe to change some of the verbs. So instead of maybe um, complete jobs, what could you have instead? Or maybe you want to describe what the job was like, but what emotion are you wanting to make your reader feel? That's something you really need to think about before you rewrite these sentences and improve them. So here we've got Jack hurt his leg. Again, think of a way to describe Jack. How do you want your reader to feel? And maybe you want to change the verb hurt. Number three, Tilly went to a museum. So you need to uh, think about the emotion you want to convey. How do you want your reader to feel? Use an adjective to describe Tilly, use an adjective to describe the museum. Um, and maybe instead of went, you could think of a different verb. 
Number four, the Victorian child was told off by his teacher. So again, think about the emotion you want to convey. Uh, what do you want your reader to be feeling as they read the sentence? Um, and describe the Victorian child. What's the Victorian child like? What's the teacher like? Um, and then instead of told off, is there something else that you could do instead of that verb? Is there a stronger verb that you could use? And then number five, London's got a present from his uncle. Um, sorry, that shouldn't be there. London got a present from his uncle, typo. Um, so think about how you want to convey um, London, think of how you want to convey his uncle, what emotions are you wanting the reader to feel, what's London like, choose an adjective to describe him, what's his uncle like, choose an adjective to describe him, and maybe instead of got a present, is there a different stronger verb that you could have put? If you're going to complete activity number two, please pause the video here to have a go. Okay, and the final activity. Now, what I want you to do is write your own emotive sentences about the pictures below. Remember to use a variety of adjectives and verbs. And if you're wanting to push your vocabulary even more and you have access to the internet, you could use an online thesaurus to find new words that mean the same thing. Or if you have a thesaurus at home, you could use that. Um, so here you've got with number one, a picture of some baby cheetahs. Number two, you've got a picture of some Victorian children who've just finished a hard day of work. Uh, here at, for three, you've got a Victorian woman playing her violin and a man playing on the piano to a group of people. And number four, you've got some children playing football. So I want you to write emotive sentences about each of these four pictures. Um, and if you want to push yourself further by using thesaurus to, you, uh, to push your vocabulary, that would be amazing. Please make sure you upload all of your work to Tapestry and I will see you next time Gandhi class. Bye.